This conference will now be recorded. Hello friends, welcome to bispsolutions.com. This is my new video in Salesforce Advanced Integration using REST API. The topic for today's video is how to create and configure REST API dynamic response. So recently we got a requirement from one of our clients and the requirement is they would like us to create one REST API solution for them. And that's REST API solution should support JSON and XML both. So the scenario is something like this, that if they are passing JSON request body, then the response should come in JSON. And but if they would be sending a request in XML, then the response should be in XML. So the same kind of scenario we are going to demonstrate you how can we fulfill this. And in order to do that, you need to have Salesforce dev org. And uh, I already got my Salesforce dev org here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to create two classes first class will be our rest api helper class and another class will be our uh, class which we are going to invoke from different orgs so let's begin and what i'm doing is i'm going to create two apex classes so you can find out the apex classes link in the video description and you can download the apex classes from there so very quickly i'm going to create two apex classes and my apex classes are ready so i'm just going to uh, copy paste those apex classes over here so this is my first apex class where it's a rest api helper class and the format with the response format will be response type will be blob and we are getting if the request is contain xml because as you know that whenever we send a request or request from the rest api we need to specify whether the whether the content type should be xml or json so here it would validate that if the con if the content type is xml then the response should be in xml else the else the response should be in json so that's why we have explicitly serialized the response depends on based on the content type so whether it's an xml or a json so the next thing is if the response type is serialized response if the response type contain xml so we have to explicitly serialize it and the response will be in xml that's what we are doing here so i create a new instance called response xml and in response xml we write the elements and this the element will be xml version and response whatever response we are getting that response i get associate with this xml out and it will return xml out and here i created one wrapper class that's a response base which would be responding back the success and the message success is true and it will display message records are updated so let's save this class the another class which i'm going to create that is the class which we are going to invoke from our uh, rest api so let me create one more class and in order to do that uh, let me get to the new instance, new tab, create a new Apex class. And uh, here, the Apex class I have created. So in this Apex class, in this example, I'm going to create, I'm going to send a request to create new con a new account from the REST API. So let me save this. and uh, just a second yeah so that's the class and you can see in this class so that's a url mapping so this url mapping we would be going to call from the workbench or from postman and that's for testing so rest api json xml 
and uh, i use a do post method and if the post method is it will extract the content type out of it and from content type it will validate it will figure it out whether it the content type is xml or json and accordingly it will send a response and there's one another wrapper class for account detail which would be responding back the first name and phone so let's save this and now in order to test it i'm going to take help of workbench and in workbench i open rest explorer and in rest explorer first of all i'm going to validate for that if my content type is json so i choose post method and in post method the header is content type application is json so it will accept the content type response uh, sender is in json format and uh, so we'll be going to call this so i'll just write the apex rest so i just you remove the services slash slash apex rest slash and then i would be calling this url apex rest slash api and create account and in you know, in body i'm going to pass one uh, i need to pass two inputs first is name and phone number and their first name and phone and this should be passed as a detail so i just pass as a detail and here are here i give the information as we have passed two parameters or you can call that's two values actually first is first name as sumit and the second is phone so second is phone as one two three four five six seven eight and i'll say summit underscore bis so as you can see the content type is json and the uh, the request we are sending the out uh, the send the information which we are passing on to the apex rest function so that is also in the form of json so when we execute it let me execute this now and you can see the response is 200 okay and we got a message that the account has been created successfully so let's go and check whether the account has been inserted or not and bingo so a new account has been inserted named as summit underscore bisp that's the same information and the response you are getting the response is in the form of json now uh, I just wanted to test the same thing, but this time the in header, the response or the sending information will be in XML instead of JSON. So now we are going to validate for XML and character set U and application XML and the info, the information which we are going to pass that information. The the the, the method we are going to pass that method will be that that data will be in xml format so xml version is equal to 1.0 encoding is equal to utf ut utf 8 question mark and uh, then i am going to create a new request slash request and in this request the details which i'm going to pass the detail which we are going to pass here detail slash detail and in detail i'm going to pass first name as summit 
new b i s p slash first name and the second input is for phone and two zero three zero four zero five zero that's a sample input now let's test it and uh, when i click on execute now here you can see the information which we are sending that is in the form of xml that is not in the form of json so we are sending an information we are making a request in xml and the response also we are getting that response is also in xml form so as you can see this is also in xml form the response we received xml version response message is account created and that's the id of the account newly inserted account so let's go and check and you can see this is my new so like this way we can uh, make a request in html as uh, sorry in xml as well as in json both because many times we got a requirement that they are they don't want any uh, class they don't want to serialize json in their uh, target or in their source program so like this method they can send a they can make a request in both xml and in json so that's all in this video if you have some questions if you have some queries you can post your comments in comment box if you like our video don't forget to press like button you will find out the code description in the link below thanks for watching have a nice day goodbye